Hello, for this math course, I want you to get your hands dirty. That means I don't only want you, want you to sit down and calculate some derivatives with a pen and paper, and that I certainly want you to do as well, but I really want you to get some feel for function for mathematics. And there are some brilliant tools out there, and I want to show you one which is for free, which is very powerful, which I am using to create some graphs for this lecture and I encourage you very very strongly to use and to learn to develop some skills in even some simple programming skills and to be able to visualize some of the exciting maths we're going to do. So this is where I recommend you go www.wolframcloud.com. Now I will sign in and of course, since you possibly don't have an ID yet, it's all for free. Um, make sure you sign up for the free version. Um, so you would want to create an ID. I will just log in. So I have now uh, logged in with my email address and I'm gonna go to the development platform. Okay, and so here I am. You can do all sorts of things. I don't, I don't know all the things you can do with it and you can uh, surely uh, um, explore quite a lot, but I will show you how to plot functions. Okay, so now it's gonna be a start. So in here you have, basically, you, there's also a place where you can save documents, but you possibly use Dropbox or something that may be more convenient for that. Um, I go to my home folder here and I've done a number of things already and I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Um, what you possibly at the, fir in the first time you go there, this will be empty. What you want to do is you want to create a new notebook. You can give this a, a name and uh, let's call it test. So I could call it my first um, so I've now just made this look a little bit bigger. So if you click on the plus here, you can uh, add certain things, plain text and Wolfram language input. These are the two things we're gonna do. Let's start with some text. You may want to write something so you remember what you've been doing. So for instance, my first attempt at plotting a function. This is just text. You can see now, if you go underneath, the cursor turns horizontal. Click, mouse click with the horizontal cursor, we'll get this plus up again, and now the magic is gonna start. We're gonna do some Wolfram language input. So now we're using some programming language. If you want to plot a function, that's surprisingly easy. You type plot, you can also already see there's a 3D plot, very exciting things, which we will use as well. And then in square brackets, you have to tell the function what to plot. So from our introductory lecture on uh, slide 20, I think it was, we had a polynomial function, but we didn't show what it looked like in the lecture. So let's see what that function looked like. The function was three times x to the power of Four, so to the power is this little hat in this language, plus five times x to the power of two plus three. Okay, so that is our function. Now let's see what happens. If you, you now want the, the program to actually execute this command, you're telling the computer to plot this function go to evaluate and say evaluate cells and we'll see what happens. So, and that's now very important when you do sort of programming as we do here, sometimes things don't work. Okay, and here it tells us why. Plot called with one argument, two arguments are expected. We handed in two thing, one thing, this function, but the plot function expects two things. And in fact, what it does expect is it wants you to tell it over what range of values for x you want to plot the function. And that works, you just have to learn that. If in this little curly brackets, 
we want x to print from say negative 5 to 5. So now we go back to evaluate, evaluate cells and here we go. This is the polynomial function 3x to the 4 plus 5x squared plus 3. So you can now just change things here. You can change things in this function. What for instance if we turn that into the instead of to the 4 to the 3 you change that you just go back to evaluation and evaluate cells and you can see how the plot changes. So like this you can very easily explore how different functions look like and I uh, recommend that you do that. One other very nice thing is here you're not uh, you can name the variables however you want them to be named. So your variable could be an M if uh, one reason or another you like M but then you need to say what the range of M should be. And let me just change the function a little bit. We'll do minus 100 here and perhaps we are using a to the fifth here. So we evaluate and you'll see it evaluated just as well, just with M's rather than X's. It doesn't make a difference for the software. Okay, so if you want to do more, you go underneath here and you can add more. Again, a new text, you could say, um, let's explore something else. I should, of course, even for this little clip, get my spelling right. Explore something else how to calculate derivatives. Now this is actually a quite dangerous thing for me to tell you because I'm not I'm gonna tell you in a moment how to calculate derivatives of functions. But of course I want you to be able to do that by yourself. I want you to do that just with a pen and a paper. The reason why I'm telling you here is because you can check your work. You can check your homework, you can check your practice questions, but in the exam you are on your own. So please use this facility wisely. Just use it to check your work. And please don't let me regret my decision to show you this one. So we again click on the horizontal cursor and the plus appears and we add some language input. So let's write down a function first. Let's say the function we want to get a derivative from is 6 times x to the 5. Okay, so of course we know what the result here should be. It should be a 6 times 5, so 30 times x to the 4. That should be the result. So let's use an example where we know the solution. And the command for the language to do that is just a D, a big D for derivative, then square brackets, one at the beginning and one at the end. And let's actually again try what happens here. Evaluation, evaluate cell, and here is the result. Clearly something didn't quite work. We are just getting the function back. So something isn't really as we wanted it to be. So you always need to switch your brain on. Let's see why that is. Well, I know, I'll tell you in a moment. Okay, so once you start typing this function D, you can actually get some help on that function. Okay, if you click on that little um, I, and you get some help here, and most likely, you will also get some um, examples, basic examples. And here's how you use that function d of x to the n, but you need to tell the function with respect what the variable is with, the, with respect to which you want to form the der derivative. And we didn't do that. So let's go back, 6x to the 5, but we want the derivative with respect to x. So let's go to evaluation, evaluate cells, and here is indeed our result, 30 times x to the 4, as we expected. 
Mm -hmm. so. so for next week, we're going to possibly talk a little bit more about derivatives. I'll already show you uh, something else. So what about uh, now a uh, second derivative? Yeah, we'll have to be able to do that as well. So what is, for instance, the second derivative of that function? We'll use the function. We can copy and paste. But now we need to tell it somehow that we are using the second. And we can already see over here again in the help how we're going to do it. We're going to do it with in curly brackets x. And here we have comma 4 because it, this says we want the fourth. So we clearly want x comma 2. This gives us the second derivative. We go Again, we go to evaluation. And here's our result. So I told you in the first week that two important functions you need to be able to use are the exponential and the logarithm function. So let me just show you how to use these. Let's just check basic derivatives of an exponential function. So it's exp and then in square brackets the argument. So the exponential of x, we want the derivative with respect to x. So we go to evaluation. Here we go. It's e to the x. Again, that's just dif differently expressed. e to the x is the same as exponent the exponential function of x. And if you wanted to use the logarithm, so log is just the natural logarithm. And the first derivative with respect to x of log x is 1 over x. OK, you may remember that. Next week, you certainly will have to. So this was my introduction to this uh, ball from little, little Language. You can write notebooks. Um, go back. Um, so here we just created this test notebook. Uh, you can already see we can plot bivariate functions. Uh, we will do that later. So I would be really, really pleased. Uh, and it will certainly help you in your learning process if you get your hands a little bit dirty. And certainly when we come to dealing with bivariate functions, really being able to plot bivariate functions will make your life much, much easier. So enjoy. <laughs>